I was sort of thinking, well, what am I going to do next? My, that was really where my head is at. So you were thinking that maybe footy wasn't going to work? Yeah, I was thinking that that, that could have been the end. Josh Kennedy spent more than a decade as one of the AFL's most dominant inside midfielders, a true big game player who always produced his best footy in finals. Josh was a key member of Sydney's 2012 Premiership side. Born into one of football's most famous families, he was drafted by Hawthorne, following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. But after just three seasons, Josh left the club and made the move to Sydney. Now retired, how does Josh look back on what he's achieved and what does he have planned for the next phase of his life? This is The Plus Side, thanks to Host Plus. Josh, thanks for joining us. Richo, thank you very much for having me. Mate, it's a fair career when you have a look at it. 290 games, three best and fairest, three All-Australians, a Premiership player. You've been retired now, well, what is it, about four or five weeks. If you had a chance to look back and go, geez, I did pretty well, I'm pretty proud of what I've done. Probably since I announced it's been incredibly overwhelming, uh, the support. You know, if I reflect back to my time when I first came to Sydney and what my mindset was, I've certainly exceeded any sort of personal expectations. You come from a family that is synonymous with football in Australia, obviously with your grandfather. He's a legend in the uh, Hall of Fame. And then your father, John, played in four premierships for the Hawthorne Footy Club. So what was it like growing up at Kennedy in Melbourne, a big footy name? My grandfather, my father, they they were just that really to me yeah. during my childhood. I hadn't really, I didn't know my grandfather as a, yeah. as a, uh, a legend of, of the game. Uh, I hadn't really heard him talk in front of a crowd of, of AFL supporters until I actually got to Hawthorne. I just knew him as my grandfather. Yeah. He used to uh, take me up to the farm and pay me 10 bucks an hour to mow the lawns and pick blueberries and spuds. But I knew it was special. Like I knew I, I, I was pretty lucky because you know I got tickets to games and got into the rooms. Dad was uh, assistant coach of the Hawks in the early 90s. So I knew that I, I got to experience things that a lot of other kids didn't. So 2006 comes around and the Hawks take you as a father and son selection. How did you find out about it? Did you find out earlier in the year? Was it always something that was going to happen or was it a bit of a surprise at the time? The year before I had a really good year um, and then got injured at the start of that, in my final year of school and, and dad and, and the club told me uh, about a quarter of the way through the year that it was going to happen to take a little bit of pressure off, which was, which was good. I was a father and son as well, and I got to the club and it, it actually was a good thing. I felt really at home because a lot of people knew me. Was that a little bit of what it was like for you? Like people knew who you were because of your family? Yeah, definitely. Um, no one had ever called me Joey before, before, yeah. I, before I arrived at Hawthorne, and it's just stuck ever since uh, due to the family nicknames. My grandfather was Kanga and Roo yeah. and, and then Joey. So, you know, yeah, nickname straight away, and a lot of the people around the footy club that have been there years had, had dealt with my yeah. dad or, or my grandfather in some way and, and uh, were there just willing to help, so you're right, yeah. So three years at the Hawks, you make your debut in 2008, what a team, premiership team that you, uh, you made your debut in that year. You played the three games, it was a tough team to crack into obviously. What were your impressions that first few years just trying to make your way and break into a good team? Yeah, it was difficult. They had a great team, specifically a great midfield did, made yeah. up of, of, of big bodies too. They were, they were sort of hard inside mids, which was hard to break into, but it was great because I got to learn so much off these guys uh, as, as a junior. You had some all-time greats there. Shane Crawford, obviously his last game in that premiership, and Sam Mitchell, a Brownlow medalist. Did you learn a lot off those guys that probably helped you later on once you did get to Sydney? Probably Sam in particular, who was a little bit more reserved, um, but... I'd just watch everything that he did, yeah. how he'd train, uh, how he'd talk, the patterns he'd run, all those sort of things. Uh, he probably doesn't know it. I, I should tell him and thank him uh, for how much I, I, I learned off him. But uh, yeah, you just start to uh, soak it up and, and carry a bit of that with you. So Joey, 10 games the next year, and then obviously the move comes about. How did that come about? Was that you initiating it? Was it, was it Hawthorne? How did the trade happen? I didn't know about it until the end of the season. So I think I played round two in 2009. Felt like I played pretty well and then got, got dropped out the following week and didn't play again until about round 14. So, yeah, it was a funny time because I was, I was sort of playing pretty well in the reserves, but banging my head against the wall, I was sort of thinking, well, what am I going to do next? My, 
that was really where my head is at. Yeah. What you know, what's next year going to entail? Like, try and look to do something on the side, start yeah. something else. So um, you were thinking that maybe footy wasn't going to work yeah, out. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that that, that could have been the end. But you know, the way that the game is, uh, sometimes you need a break, and I got one later in the year. We had a few injuries and and ended up playing the last nine games, and played pretty well. But unbeknownst to me, in the background, Sydney had already reached out uh, through George Stone, who was at the Hawthorne yeah. when my dad was there. And one, once the Swans made the approach, you were pretty keen to move, yeah? Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it wasn't as simple as just, yet. Yeah, let's go. I want to make sure I did everything right uh, by Hawthorne. I was grateful for the, their opportunity. Um, but, you know, having after having conversations with Clarko and, and then Paul Ruse at the time, it was pretty evident that my opportunity was yeah. at Sydney. And we're here today thanks to Host Plus, who are passionate about giving their members the right level of financial advice. Joey, during that trade period, was there a piece of advice that you got that really helped you make your decision? Through that time, it uh, was inter interesting. Campbell Brown was a bit of a mentor to me at, at the Hawks, someone I, I looked up to with the way that he, he went about it. He, he had a lot of fun, but you know, trained really hard, uh, knew when the right, the right balance was. He was one, well, my dad, obviously. I think the main advice was that you know, if you take the name, the Kennedy lineage away from it, it's a pretty obvious decision because that's where the opportunity is and, and through conversations with Alistair Clarkson and all that sort of stuff, it was, it was pretty clear. So that was the advice and it, was, it certainly made the decision pretty easy. So you arrive up in Sydney, obviously a great culture there already, the Bloods culture, we've heard so much about it. What were your first impressions when you walked in the door? The day I got there, you know, everyone had come up and shake my hand, say hello, how close everyone was trained hard and then yeah. they'd, they'd still go out on the weekend and most of the guys would be there. Uh, they wouldn't get too hassled like they would in Melbourne. So for me, the mindset was, look, I've got a three years up here minimum, um, go up there, give it my best shot. And worst case scenario, you have a great experience living away from home, uh, meet new people, new city, and uh, you come back a little bit more rounded. Uh, and best case, you can get another contract and, and, and you kick on from there. Mate, you clicked straight away. You finished third in the best and fairest in your first year, so the move was a good one. What, what do you think that was? What, what was the click that just made you suddenly become a player that can finish top three in a BNF? It's funny how you can, you know, when you're trying to get into a side that's already pretty established, coaching staff can tell you, keep telling you what you need to work on and, and your weaknesses in your game yeah. to be able to get better. I think then it was sort of like, this is your position, this is why we've got you, because you've got this, 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 these are your strengths, bring that. Ruzi made it really clear as to what I needed to do. Yeah, that for me, that was that was all I needed. And, yeah. and uh, Bit of belief they put in you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, more than a bit. It was a lot of belief uh, from the coaching staff and then the, the players around. Mate, by 2012, you're all Australian, you're best and fairest, and you're a premiership player against your old team in Hawthorne. It must have been pretty surreal, but pretty poetic out there playing your old team in a, in a premiership after three years of being in Sydney. Yeah, it was it was an unbelievable uh, year that year. What did I met I met Anna, my wife, at the beginning of the year. Um, we, were, we were playing well, obviously, as a, as a footy club. I, I'd taken another step uh, in my development. The poetic nature of it in having my grandfather, who was going to present the cup to yeah. um, Hawthorne, had they have won. Uh, which I found out earlier earlier in that week, and just feeling like yeah, that, that sense of destiny yeah. uh, about it on a personal level, which uh, turned out to be amazing and everything I would have wished for. Joey, you played in two losing grand finals, but you always played well in the big games, particularly the Bulldogs one in 2016. 34 and three goals in a low-scoring game. You couldn't have done any more. If you look at your finals record, you always played well in big games. Why do you think that is? Because some players do disappear a little bit in big games. You never did. What was it about your game that made you produce on the big days? You know, as a kid growing up, watching all the tapes of my dad, uh, watching grand finals, I can enjoy the build-up, the energy, you know. Some people can get drained by it. I felt like it, it energised me. I certainly don't try any um, harder, but I, I just loved the I just loved the occasion, yeah. Joey, as uh, your career came to an end this year, a few injuries started to set in, obviously. So when you had to come to the decision to retire, was it your, was it your body or was it your mind or was it both? What, what was the final sort of catalyst for the decision? In fact, my body was as, as, 
you know, everyone says it, but it generally, in terms of the, the my KPIs, my, my uh, PBs and all that sort of stuff was as, as strong and as fit as I had been uh, in any years previous. So I was really confident in my body. Um, but I think just the way that the team was going, you know, the fact that I was being sort of moved out of position, you could tell that, that the, there's this new generation of, of swans coming in, which was great. Um, I was sort of thinking then, I, you know, this is probably it, yeah. so try and enjoy it. Do you know what's next? Do you 100% know yet or not? No, I don't 100% know. Some more advice I've, I've received uh, in the last six months has, has just been to take your time. Um, don't sort of jump at the first thing that, that, that presents itself. Try and decompress as much as you can and, and, and then make a really considered uh, decision on, on what you want to do next. Right, awesome, and what a career. It's a Hall of Fame career. I had a look before, you, you finished up second in contested possessions all time to Paddy Dangerfield and second all time in clearances to Joel Selwood. That's a Hall of Fame career, mate. Well done. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for having mate. me.